Test, test, test. Testing one, two, three. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mark Gingrass, and today I'm going to give you an inside perspective on how I record my my programming channel, my R Cradle to Grave channel. How do I do that? Right. So you have uh, right now uh, multiple perspectives that you can look at. I have a GoPro running, so you can see kind of this angle. I have an iPhone that's showing both of my screens. I've got my screen recording on, front camera on, all kinds of cameras, right? So now you can kind of see my workflow setup. Now, the two cameras on the side are not my setup. That's so I can show you my setup. My setup is typically just this camera here and the screen recording that I'm going to show you with OBS. Uh, if you find these tutorials helpful, uh, please subscribe and share and do all that good stuff. What I'm going to do is basically walk you through how I create an R video without doing the R video. But how do I get there? This is important because if you want to teach online, you have to know some of these tricks to help your workflow and make things more easy for you, more efficient. Uh, if you want to put some tutorials on Skillshare or Udemy or YouTube, wherever you want, you want to try to make some money and monetize, these tips will help you out. So stay tuned and... Uh, we'll get right into it. So I have OBS running right now and I have shortcut keys. If I press Control Alt 6, you will see on the screen that I have just now moved to the bottom right and you see my RStudio IDE, my integrated development environment. I typically start the video in this position. The reason I do that is because when somebody clicks on the video and they immediately see code, they know it's, oh, he's going to teach me code. It's not... If it's like this, they might think it's gonna be a presentation or he's just gonna talk about something. No, I am coding. So I start like this. I give a quick intro, welcome to Cradle to Grave R, blah, 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 I'm about to teach you this. And then I switch to full screen me to give them that sympathy. Hey, maybe if you like this, you can subscribe and share. It would, it would really help me out. And then I jump right back into the coding. Now, you're going to make some, some errors when you're uh, coding. That's fine. You can edit some of that stuff out in post. But the fewer errors you make, the better. S because it just makes it faster to, to edit in the end. What I do is I do some basic research on what concept I want to teach first. I'll look up some PDFs. I'll look up some Word or you know some documents, uh, maybe even some videos. But I translate some of that documentation into video. That's what I'm good at. I can translate it to a video. Uh, not plagiarize. I change the data sets usually and I change the order and just stuff like that. Like I don't copy verbatim, but most of the stuff I do is pretty short. It's, you know, a couple lines of code. Not a big deal. And I add the information that I know from my programming background and people do appreciate the actual background uh, information. So now if I'm going to switch to one of these cameras here so you can see my two screens, how they're laid out. And that's what's important is on the very left hand side. I have my OBS running. Now you want to keep that up and running most likely because if it stops recording and you started going on and on with the best interview, lecture, tutorial of your life and you realize you forgot to hit record or it crashed, you'd like to see that happen so you don't waste time. So I keep that up. You can also monitor your, your uh, audio levels that way because the meter will go. So there's a couple of good things with that. I have shortcut keys to make me disappear from the screen completely. I can move up top. I can have two of me if I want, but that's not that helpful. So that's what I can do if I'm in the way. Sometimes I have to show the bottom of my screen, so I show it. But if I'm concentrating on the bottom for a while, I'll keep myself up here and talk about the bottom. Of course, I have to adjust these crops every once in a while because I don't know why, but sometimes the, uh, the dimensions just change. So that's what I do, right? Now, you'll see that I have the PDF file right next to my OBS so I can reference my bullet points or, hey, this is how you write the code. And then I write the code over in the right-hand side of my screen. I write the code. And when I'm obviously looking at the, uh, the other screen, I'm obviously stuck somewhere or something like that, what you can do in post-edit is start zooming in on that code. So when you zoom in, I disappear. You could record yourself separately and in post embed myself into this bottom right corner. But again, I'm trying to be as efficient as possible. So typically I can do the tutorials without too many mistakes, too many errors, and I don't have to worry about that. Um, so the alternative would be to just record three separate tracks plus the screen. So, well, not three because I'm, I'm doing that now with, with these two cameras. 
but I would record my DSLR camera right here and I'd record the screen separately. And then in post, I can embed myself in the corner. But again, it's just, I'm just trying to be more efficient. Uh, it's safer to do it that way because you can always keep your in, keep you in or out of the shot. It's fine. You could be anywhere you want. So there's some trade-offs and that's what I do. My OBS now, I'm on a PC. So my OBS, as soon as I'm done recording, I hit the stop button. It'll transfer that file to my OneDrive automatically because that's where I have it set to go. And then I just grab my MacBook Pro, run down to the coffee shop and download it. It takes maybe, you know, five, 10 minutes to download these videos. And then you can go ahead and record, right? Uh, I mean, edit, you can do your post edit. So that's basically the, the workflow. It does take a little bit of time to get used to. And sometimes you screw up the, um, you know, the shortcut keys or something goes wrong. But here's the thing. It's better to just, you know, have a few flaws and don't worry about it and just post it. But you also want to have high quality. So there's a trade-off there too, but don't be a perfectionist to 100% degree. You know, get the 80% solution and just be done with it. Make the next one better. Make the next one after that better and better and better. You know, and I usually have a couple beers when I'm doing this because sometimes you're here for two hours, three hours, messing around with whatever. Uh, you'd be surprised at what kind of weird things happen when you're trying to do this stuff. Um, your camera just all of a sudden stops working. You have to reboot your computer. Everything changes. Um, driver updates. I forgot to hit record, which I just forgot to do about 10 minutes ago <laughs> uh, on one of the uh, devices that I have. So that's it. I really just wanted to show you that inside scoop. And this way, if you're going to teach something online like Udemy or Skillshare, you want to make some extra money on YouTube, this will help you out, and this is how I do it. I have plenty of videos where I show how to edit, like multi-cam clips, how to synchronize audios, how to post onto Skillshare, things like that. So please check out the channel, and uh, you'll find all kinds of little tips and tricks to help you create content and use this technology to your advantage. So thanks, and subscribe below, and comment with uh, any type of tips you have. Thanks.